Howdy folks, Dave of Chaos Crafting here. Today we're going to explore adding cast bricks to our XPS foam tabletop terrain. Here's an example of a dice tower that I made from a Hearst Arts mold. It is 100% made from cast dental plaster, and it's a little heavy. The thought occurred to me, I could combine some cast bricks and XPS foam to achieve some pretty cool results. Behold, the adventuring party, Family of Fang, as they breach the crypt of the Houndmaster. What awaits for them in this dusty tomb? <clears throat> Enough of that. Here's the finished product of this video. This pillar is a combination of cast dental stone bricks plus some XPS foam for the pillar itself. It gives it a good weight and it sits well on the table, doesn't get knocked over easily, very nice. Now, the centerpiece of this set, the crypt entrance. Many of the details are cast from a mold. This cloaked dude, circular windows, the pillars. Oh, check the detail. It's hard to carve that from foam. And this is a two-sided set piece. Details front and back. The window details were cut from a thin sheet of plastic card. I'll get to the windows towards the end of the video. Grab a few plastic disposable plates, along with maybe a red Solo cup or two, a plastic spoon, a measuring device, two tablespoons, 30, millil 30 millimeters, mill mill milliliters, I've been drinking, molds of choice, and a six inch spackle knife. Don't forget the dental plaster. Not getting paid for this review, but Merlin's Magic has the stuff. Very, very good. You will also need some Jet Dry and a container of water. The Jet Dry is a flow enhancer or a surficant. It will help the plaster flow into the detail areas of the molds and hopefully release any trap bubbles. Go ahead and submerge the molds. Let them soak for a minute or so. I have partially dried the molds and placed them on the plastic plates. The plates are used to catch any plaster overflow. Three is the number of molds I can safely cast with the nine to 11 minute plaster working time. After that, it starts to set up. For three molds, I will use three fluid ounces of water. My mix ratio is far from scientific. If you need, Merlin's Magic Site does have a detailed ratio in their how-to section. When you've done this once, you will find you don't have to be scientific. It's okay to go by the seat of your pants. Now for the plaster, I'm gonna use about 14 ounces. This is important not to just dump that into the water, you want to slowly introduce it so that it absorbs into the liquid, else you're gonna get a huge clump that's going to take a lot of time to mix out. Tap in the plaster a little at a time. You're looking for a melted ice cream thickness. As much as possible, minimize the amount of air you introduce into the mix. Air equals bubbles, and bubbles are no bueno. If you do screw up and add too much plaster, you'll know the thickness will equal mud. Add a little bit more water to thin it down. As you are mixing, clean the sides of the cup of any powdered plaster. You can also tap the cup on the table to release bubbles trapped on the bottom. Any bubbles floating on the top can be scooped out. Once you have the correct thickness, mix for a full minute. B 
be aware, the thicker your mix, the less work time you're going to have with the plaster. You want to slowly fill the mold, not all the way up, not yet. Lift the plate and vigorously tap the bottom. This will uh, help some of those trapped bubbles in there pop to the top. I mean, if it gets bad, you can actually use a paintbrush to stir inside the mold to get the bubbles to come up. But with this mold, there's not a whole lot of trap area for bubbles, so just tapping is good. Let the mold sit for five minutes. Then you're going to smooth the top with your spackle knife. Oh, I, I should really note that it is critical for your work surface to be flat and level. The object of smoothing the top is to remove any excess plaster. If you don't do this, the top side of your brick will be convex and you'll have to do a bit of sanding later on to make the brick usable. At 30 minutes, the plaster has set hard enough to unmold. Pop them out. Be careful not to damage the mold itself and let the bricks dry overnight. I, I, I hope my explanation was easy enough to follow. If you, if you have any questions, uh, just go ahead and drop me a comment and I'll get back to it. Once you've done this once, it, it's a real easy process. Now I need to clean everything up and repeat. Now for my project, I figure I need to do this about, oh, 20 more times? Yeah, casting can be time consuming, but I believe the results are worth it. I mean, the details that you get are very nice. <laughs> yeah, so I may have gone overboard a little bit because I did a lot of casting. I, I've got now container upon container full of really nicely detailed bricks. I'm going to state the obvious. I'm not going to build a four-walled crypt. This is a set piece that will be used in conjunction with like a grid map and scatter terrain. D&D, after all, is theater of the mind. I mean, but don't let that stop if you want to go all in, please. Continue. Here, I've cut out some XPS foam, just grabbed it from the scrap box, using half inch thick for the base, one inch thick for the walls. That'll account for details on both sides. Let's glue some stuff together. So I got my bricks, got my glue, this 90 degree angle ruler is really good to have. You can use it as a straight edge to keep the bricks in line and the 90 degree angle to ensure everything you build and glue together is square. My secret weapon here is a bamboo skewer that I use to kind of squeegee the excess glue out of the corners, and then it gets on my skin. It's very attractive. And now, the circular windows. Really cool bricks, but there's eight pieces. So you're gonna have to glue like a few of them together at a time, let them dry, and then glue those together. The archway requires a little attention to detail. It could be assembled as a pointed arch or as a rounded arch. I like the pointed arch. Moving right along. So now it's about brick carving and texture. I've covered this in some of my other videos, so I'm not gonna go too in depth, but basically using an X-Acto knife, I'm going to carve out some brick shapes into the XPS foam. Then I'm gonna use a piece of aluminum foil to 
press in to create a nice rock texture. The speed square is a perfect tool to sketch out your brick lines. When you're done, your foam should be sketched out and look something like this. Now I'm going to glue the front and the back of the archways together. We're going to wait on gluing them left to right until we're done with the walls. When you have the circular windows all glued together, you're probably going to need to sand down the sides because these don't go together perfectly. Sand it down so it's nice and square and it is exactly two inches by two inches. I started to carve the brick walls just like the base. Then I realized I wanted a more aggressive grout area. So I decided to use my fingernail and enlarge the gaps between the bricks and to round over the corners. It also made this really cool sound. With the bricks textured, I've started to assemble the walls. First, I glued the pillar to the large bottom section of the wall. Since I'm using tacky glue, the dry time is a bit long. You'll need to have patience here and set a piece aside as it dries. You could use hot glue. You just gotta be very, very careful because with these bricks, that hot glue will cool quite fast. Here I've used the accessory bricks that come with the archway to square it out to allow it to be attached to the wall. May as well glue the arches together. I, I hope this works out how I have it planned in my mind. As I'm waiting for glue to dry, I may as well go ahead and multitask and assemble the pillars. Really easy, just carved out of XPS foam. I will be using hot glue. That'll speed this part up. Let's see if I got my measurements right. Like a glove. <laughs> More glue. Okay, from here on, it's all about personal preference. You could add as much or as little of these architectural bricks as you like. But I gotta have the guy with the cloak. That's just awesome. Nope, almost forgot. We gotta finish off the top of the arch. We're just gonna cut out some XPS foam, measure it to size, make it look like bricks, drop it in. Since I have plenty of Gothic architectural bricks, I think I'm gonna use a few up here at the top to kind of blend in the join between the archway and the walls. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison of the prototype and the production piece. One key difference is the placement of the windows. On the prototype, I made the windows flush with a brick wall, leaving a very deep recess on the inside. I didn't like that. And now for the windows. There's multiple ways you can go at this. Fortunately, if you want to take the easy way, Hearst Arts does have a pattern. If you want to challenge yourself, you can even make your own designs. Heck, you can like do stained glass using colored Sharpie markers and clear plastic. You can make this completely unique to your D&D campaign. The adventurers must shatter the stained glass windows to make the dragon vulnerable but for right now, I'm taking the easy way. Start by cutting out your pattern of choice. Always use a sharp X-Acto blade. You will then transfer this to a thin piece of plastic card. If you don't have plastic card, you could use thin cardstock. So a question for you. Do you think the use of molds 
are cheating? Is it too easy to create something really detailed and awesome looking? Yeah, drop me a comment, let me know. I, I see it as, as a craft. It's still just a tool in your arsenal to create something cool. I'm still not sure about 3D printing. But I tell you, right now, if I had a 3D printer where I could knock out some quick, you know, round windows, I, I, I think I would. As with any hobby, acquiring tools is not inexpensive. I was fortunate and found the molds used in this build off a Facebook group at a nice price. If asked whether the time and expense to build brick enhanced terrain was worth it, I would say hell yeah. Oh, oh, and if someone asked you if you've liked and subscribed this video, I would also hope you could say hell yeah. Once the pattern's on the plastic card, it's just a matter of cutting it out. The sharper your X-Acto blade, the easier this is going to be. Now center the circle over the window design you just cut out and trace. Cut along the circle you just traced. You'll probably lose your X-Acto blade tip, but that's okay. Of note, when you're cutting plastic card, you don't necessarily have to cut all the way through. You just want to score deeply enough so that you can snap it out, like so. Once we've cut it free, we're going to use some fine sandpaper, 400 grit, to clean up the edges and rough up the plastic card just a little bit to allow paint to better stick to it. Sand as much as necessary to get it to fit just the way you like in the window. And with both of my windows cut out, I've moved on to priming the piece using good old Mod Podge. Since the focus of this video was about adding cast bricks to your tabletop terrain, I think we can say this is done. Over the next few days, I'll go ahead and get this uh, painted up, detailed, and ready for the game board. I'll be sure to uh, throw some pictures up on my Instagram account so you can see how things progress along the way. And as always, guys, thanks a lot for, uh, for watching. And until next time, peace.